Have any of you received the following? It's basically a picture that purports to be of Jesus Christ and a picture of Jesus on the cross. It is accompanied by the following text, which I shall read to you. The president of Argentina received this picture and called it junk mail. Eight days later, his son died. A man received this and immediately sent out copies. His surprise was winning the lottery. Alberto Martinez received this picture, gave it to his secretary to make copies, but they forgot to distribute. She lost her job and he lost his family. This picture is miraculous and sacred. Send to ten people. Okay, how often have you received similar emails? They're often called chain emails. Well, that is a typical one that I received last week from my best friend. My best friend is one of those people who's pretty superstitious on many issues. Well, it's just typical of many of the chain letters that you yourself may have received and that I have received. So why do people pass them on and why do we believe in them? Well, let's take a look at them closely and in particular that email itself. Okay, before I answer the question, why do we pass them on? Let's take a look at the actual text itself once again and have a look at what it's about and whether it's got any basis or justification in truth. Because I think when we receive one of these chain emails, the first thing we do before we pass it on or don't pass it on, that's if you don't choose just to ignore it. And what I like to do is to actually research and find out how much truth there is actually in it. Well, the first thing it says is the president of Argentina received this picture and called it junk mail. Eight days later, his son died. Okay, now the present president of Argentina, who's a woman, all her children are still alive. No son of hers has been killed. If we go back to 1995, Carlos Menem, the then Argentinian president, his son tragically died in a helicopter accident. Well, back then in 1995, although some people did have the internet, it was very much still in its early stages. Now, fair enough, being the president of Argentina, he may well have had access, but what are the chances of him of actually getting this email? And how big back then were chain emails? If they existed at all, they would have been in the very early stage. Also, how come we've never actually heard of his son actually dying because of a chain email. How come when I've done a Google search, none of the news broadcasters, and I've translated Spanish language pages too, happen to mention this chain email? How come Carlos Menem himself has never actually mentioned it? Interesting. The next section, a man received this and immediately sent out copies. His surprise was winning the lottery. A no name given, what lottery? and where. Absolutely no basis, no facts there, no evidence given. And on to the next section. Alberto Martinez received this picture, gave it to his secretary to make copies, but they forgot to distribute. She lost her job and he lost his family. Well, I googled the name Alberto Martinez and unsurprisingly thousands and thousands of entries under that name came up. Everybody from people related to politics, to television, to the acting profession, to drug dealers and gang leaders. But interestingly enough, no stories regarding somebody whose secretary failed to distribute copies of this chain email. And finally, this picture is miraculous and sacred, sent to 10 people. Well, I received this over a week ago, and I haven't served it on or passed it on to anybody. I'm still in good health, my family's in good health, touch wood. I might be a bit unshaven today, but I'm doing pretty well, thank you for asking. So having read the email and checked the facts, what are we to make of it? Well, quite simply, once you've checked the facts and established there is absolutely no basis of truth in it, you should ask yourself what you're going to do with it. Now, the sensible thing really is to delete it and not pass it on to anybody because basically you're playing into fear. And whoever set up that original chain email, whoever put it together knew that. In many ways, it's a form of manipulation and it's a power game. And by you sending it on, you play that power game. And it's so easiest for us to believe 
because people are naturally often very superstitious. Many of us are. We're brought up to believe certain things, to have certain ideas. But it doesn't end with you because you see, if you pass it on, you negate that responsibility and you negate that blame and pass it on to somebody else. You basically pass your problems and your own paranoia and superstitions onto somebody else, which is why when you pass it on, you yourself become involved. And I'm not criticizing you at all. Many people, you know, are vulnerable. Many people are frightened by these emails. I know when I was younger, I used to pass them on. But just take a step back, forget all your prejudices, all your preconceived ideas, and just ask yourself why you're passing it on and what effect that might have on the people you're passing it on to. Because these people you're passing it on, I presume, are friends of yours. Do you really want to perhaps give those friends of yours the same emotions, the same fear that you had? Because this is nothing but the fear of fear itself and it is playing in to your fears and the fears of others. So what I'm going to say, suspend those beliefs and superstitions and think rationally and logically. And surely after having checked the email, because if you are concerned about it, check the facts and statements in it. And after you've checked that, delete it. And I have a challenge for every viewer out there. If you receive this email or any other email, let's all delete them. And let's see how many of us suffer tragedies in the next week or so. I guarantee very few of us will. And those that do, it'll probably be a coincidence. So let's all see what happens. Let's do absolutely nothing and delete the email because I guarantee nothing will happen to you. It's all an irrational superstition and by allowing superstitions to run your lives and emails such as this, you lose any sense of rationality. That could affect many other areas of your life as well as make you paranoid. Is it good for you and is it good for the people that you pass those emails on to? Because at the end of the day, by passing them on, all you're doing is negating that blame and that responsibility. And if you're a true friend, you will not pass those emails on and you will delete them. Trust me, famous last words, delete it. Delete it and delete it now. Thank you.